Hi MS50 artists, this is Ms. Kaiser and today I'm going to show you how to make a still life. And this is especially for those of you who are applying to an art high school. Um, the first thing that you're going to do is gather the stuff you need for your still life. So you need paper and pencils to draw with. You can also use colored pencils if you want to add color. I wouldn't recommend markers or paint. Those are a lot trickier. But you also need stuff to put in your still life. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to choose good stuff to put in your still life and then how to arrange it in the still life. And this part is really important. Even though you haven't started the art yet, it's going to decide what your still life looks like in the end. So choose carefully. Um, I gathered a lot of stuff that could be good for a still life. Here's some stuff. I have um, a big empty glass bottle. It's like really shiny. So I think it'll be fun to draw the different reflections in it. And it's also tall. You want a variety of stuff, um, a variety of shapes and sizes and textures. So I have some big tall stuff. I have some little stuff with a little more detail. These are both shiny, but I also have different textures. Something like this can be fun to play with because you can move it all around in your composition and it has a very different texture from those two things. You want to also think about the shapes. This has this round shape all around and I can show the dimension of that in my art. Again, this texture is going to be really fun to draw all those reflections, the dark parts and the light parts. I have um, an onion. Anything, any fruit or vegetable is awesome for a still life. Whatever you have lying around. Plants are also really good. If you look at artist still lifes, you will also often see plants. And that's because the natural shapes are really fun to draw. And they always add a little bit of, of life to your still life. There you go. Um, I have this like black raincoat. It's nice to have some cloth and that you can also use to like cover up parts you don't want to draw or um, fill in spots that look empty. It's also really good to have a light source and that doesn't have to be in the drawing. You could use a flashlight or a lamp outside of the drawing, but I didn't have a flashlight or a lamp. So I went and got a candle and that I can include in the drawing and it can also bring light into the drawing. And I'll show you a little bit later how to do that. So that's all really good stuff to include. There's also some stuff that you probably don't want to include. I would not include anything flat. You're trying in your still life to show form, which is the same thing as dimension. This is flat, and so it doesn't have dimension. It doesn't have form. It's going to be really hard to show, for instance, a shadow. There's no shadows on here. So you don't want anything flat. It's also not great to include things like this with a lot of words or pictures on a label. It's really hard to get it exactly the way it looks on here and again focusing on that is not helping you focus on form one more thing that's really helpful to have and i'll show you how to use it in a second is something called a viewfinder and i made this out of a uh, piece of cardboard that was like leftover from a package of pasta and i just cut a rectangle out of it and the reason i cut a rectangle is because my paper that i'm going to draw on is also a rectangle and in a second, after I set up the still life, I'll show you how to use this to figure out what part of the still life you're gonna draw. So gather some materials, um, pencils and paper and eraser, and maybe make yourself a viewfinder, and then gather all the stuff that you think should go in your still life. You can also think about gathering um, objects for your still life that are meaningful to you or symbolic. And then when you're writing your student introduction for your art audition, you can explain, well, I chose this to show this memory that I have. And that can be a nice element to add to your still life. Gather whatever materials you think will be fun to draw and that you think might show something about you as a person. And then I'll show you how to set them up into a still life. Okay, so you have your objects and you're ready to make your still life. The first thing you need to do is arrange them into the composition that you want. And remember, this is really important because however you arrange your composition, that's how your finished art will look. So make your decisions really carefully. You don't want all the objects to be the same size and in a line. Here's what you are not looking for. So if you have 
a few small things all next to each other. It's just not very interesting. You could draw them beautifully and it would still just not be a very interesting composition. You want more variety, big things next to small things, and you want things to overlap. So even if I just put one thing in front of the other, one thing behind the other, that already makes it a little more interesting. So I'm not just gonna use these three little objects. I'll use some bigger things. You can also use like a big book or something to make some height difference. So I can put some things on top of this, some things in front of it, some things behind, and that'll make a lot more variety in my composition. Think about, be honest with yourself, if there's a part of, of an object that you don't wanna draw, you're like, that's too hard, or that's not interesting to me, that's okay, cover it up. So I don't wanna draw these words. It's really hard to put words in the still life, so I'm gonna cover them up, that's fine. Just use like a, a piece of clothing, a piece of cloth to smush on top. And then instead of those words, I'm gonna draw all these beautiful folds. That's much more interesting to me anyway. You can add a plant here. It's okay while you're doing this to decide that, you know, you thought you wanted to draw something. Nah, you're not looking, liking how it looks anymore. Take it out, that's fine. Make the decisions as you go. So see, I'm being really careful deciding where each piece of the object is gonna go. Maybe I want this in front there. And this is looking pretty good to me so far. I'm definitely gonna be careful about where I put the candle because the candle is my light source. So wherever I put the candle, that's gonna decide how bright each part of an object is. See how when I put the candle right here, this side of the vase is really bright and this side is dark. If I move it farther away from that object, then it's a little less clear which side is light and which side is dark. So you want your light source pretty close to um, the whole group of objects. So I might still play with this a little bit, but it's pretty good. I have some short things, I have some tall things, I have a few different textures, and I definitely have things overlapping. Here you have an overlap here, this is coming back out in front, one thing in front of the other, and I have a light source. And then once you've started to figure out where everything in your still life is gonna go, you also have to figure out where you're gonna go. And what I mean is, depending on where you're sitting and where you're looking from, the still life is gonna look totally different. So right now, this is one perspective. If I move up and over the still life, if I'm drawing it from above, that's a totally different perspective, right? Now the candle looks almost just like a circle with a little piece to the side. Most still lives you're gonna see are drawn from kind of in front of the objects. And the viewfinder I showed you before can really help you figure out exactly what you wanna show on your paper because it's the same shape as your paper. So how to use the view to, viewfinder is to hold it up to your eye. Right now I'm holding it up to the, the lens of the camera, but you hold it up to your eye so that you can see everything in that little rectangle and move it until you think you have the rectangle of stuff you wanna draw. So if I'm holding my paper this way, I'll hold the viewfinder this way. If I'm gonna hold my paper horizontally, I'll hold the viewfinder horizontally. And then I can move back, I can move forward to zoom in, maybe I just want a, a really close up still life. I can move side to side to find exactly the, the um, arrangement of objects that I want, the composition that I want. Okay, so I added one thing to my composition. I felt like it was still kind of boring, so I wanted something going all the way across the composition. Um, and I added those branches in the back going diagonally across the composition. That can really make it uh, more interesting to look at. And now I'm ready to start drawing. 
I'm gonna stay in one place and try not to touch anything because we want everything to stay exactly like it is. And if I move, then my perspective changes. And if the stuff moves, then, you know, the stuff moves and it's in a different place. To start, if you have pencils like this that have different numbers on them, like B and 3B and 4H, start with an H or a 2H or 3H pencil. You can see on the back if you have a case like this, B pencils are really soft, which means that they make dark marks, and H pencils are harder, which means that they make lighter marks. So you're gonna start with a slightly harder pencil so that you can draw really lightly. Not too hard, because if you choose a 5H pencil, it'll like really dig into the paper, you don't want that. So I'm gonna choose just an H, and your first job and if you don't have those pencils and you have a regular pencil, that's fine, don't worry. Just draw lightly for the beginning. And your first job is gonna be to get all of the shapes of your still life in as quickly as you can. Draw them carefully, but try to draw quickly. And the reason for that is you wanna get a general picture going and then stop and erase anything you need to before you start adding too much detail and getting darker and then it's a little harder to erase. So start with getting as much as you can in really lightly. You can even set a timer for like three minutes and try to get all the shapes in. So let me try to get as much as I can in in three minutes. And see how I'm, first of all, I'm drawing so lightly you can barely see it. And I'm definitely not giving any detail. I'm letting, myself just really, really quickly put the shapes in. And you'll also notice that I'm moving my whole arm, not just my wrist, and that helps to get some, some looser shapes in. If you, um, if you go a little slower and you're kind of doing some detail and just using your wrist, you will probably take longer You'll probably draw a little bit more darker and um, you might get actually less accurate shapes. There's something about kind of moving your whole arm. It can kind of trick your brain into just copying what you see. And another really important thing to do right now is to forget what you're drawing. So let's say you have an apple in your still life. Don't Remember in your brain that it's an apple. Try to tell your brain it's not an apple, it's not anything. It's just lines, it's just shapes, it's values, dark areas and light areas. It's not an apple anymore. And the reason for that is that if you remember it's an apple, you might draw the wrong shapes. You might draw what you think an apple looks like. Well, I think an apple looks like a circle, so I might draw a circle. But from your perspective, maybe it's not really a perfect circle. Or maybe it's kind of an old apple and it has a little bit of a bruise and you forgot about that because you were just thinking about that idea of an apple in your head. You don't wanna draw the idea of an apple or the idea of a glass bottle. You wanna draw what you really see in front of you. So just forget what's there. Try to show the lines you see, try to show the values and the shapes you see, and try not to think about the stuff what the objects are that you're drawing. And now that I have the basic shapes in, I can pause for a second and compare. I'm even gonna hold my drawing up a little so I can compare it more easily to the objects in front of me. Is everything in the right place? Compare the objects to each other. One thing I'm noticing is that from my perspective, the, the plant in the vase is in front of this glass bottle. But in my drawing, they're separate. There's the glass bottle and then the plant. So notice where your objects are in relation to each other. In real life, the glass bottle is behind the plant. So now I need to figure out why. What did I do wrong that made them separate? Well, I think this glass bottle is a little wider in real life than I drew it. So this is why we started out drawing so lightly. Because at this point, I don't even really have to erase. I can kind of just draw over what I had before. And I'll probably erase those lines later, but for now I just wanna, again, like really keep the shapes loose. And 
I'm looking at my objects way more than I'm looking at the paper, especially at this point. It's also really good to have something in your composition going off the page. So if you run into a problem where you're like, oh, it's actually kind of bigger than that, don't squish it in. That'll be uncomfortable. Your viewer will be like, ooh, why is it all squished there? And they might even know that it's not really what it looks like in real life. So instead of squishing it in, let it go off the page. Draw right up until the edge. And that actually makes your composition more interesting to look at anyway. You can go off the bottom edge too. And it's interesting to have stuff way up here in the background, stuff really, really close to the viewer. And notice that I am hitting every edge now. I'm really um, sometimes going off the edge, but definitely using the whole paper. If you have a line of objects right in the middle and nothing back here and nothing up here, it's not as interesting a composition. Use the whole paper, fill it up. So once you have <clears throat> the basic objects in your composition, you have the shapes down, you can start adding in some more details. And I really encourage you to check several times before you do that to make, to make sure everything is in the place you wanted it. If it doesn't look, you know, 100% perfect like what you're looking at, that's fine. You don't have to drive yourself crazy, but it's gonna be a lot easier to change things now than to change things later. So wait until you really have everything where you want it, but then you can start adding in some details and you might wanna switch if you are using these, these pencils with numbers on them, you might wanna switch to a softer pencil for this because you can see how light this is. I wanna be able to see what I'm doing a little bit more. So I was using an H, <clears throat> I might switch to a B or maybe a 2B. I'll use 2B. Again, you are trying to forget what you're drawing. So I bet if I was thinking, well, I'm going to draw a candle with a flame, I would draw something like this. And then I would put the flame, the little stick for the wick, and then a flame in the middle. Now that's a cute little cartoon of a candle, but it's not what this candle looks like. First of all, the flame is all off to the side and it's not this cute little teardrop flame shape. It's like a funny uh, organic shape. And I also wouldn't notice if I had done that, all of the details of this candle. This candle has um, a thick glass bottom so you can see some value down there and some cool reflections. There's a little value in here. The wax that's melting up here has a darker value than the stuff at the bottom that's not yet melted. I can show that. You're always gonna get more detail, more interesting drawing if you look at whatever you're drawing and forget what it is. Now my light source is the candle. There's also some light coming from the room, but um, in the drawing, the light source is the candle, and I know that that's giving off the most direct light. And so in my drawing, everything is gonna be lit from that. This side is gonna be light, this side is gonna be dark. 
on that bag, especially the bag because it's so shiny, there's gonna be different folds and the right side of the fold is gonna be light and the left side of the fold is gonna be dark. So like this piece that comes out, it's gonna be really, really bright on the right and really, really dark on the left. Same thing with each piece. Look at the pages of the book. There's two sections, right? There's the right side and the left side. And you can notice in when you're looking at the objects, which part is darker, the left pages or the right pages? You know in real life that the pages are the same color, but there is a big shadow on the left. So the pages are all gonna be much, much darker. So I can lay down some value. You can even use the side of your pencil. Now I'm not going too dark yet because it's still really early. I can save the really dark values for later, but I definitely want to be able to show that these pages are not getting that light from the candle, and so these pages look a little bit darker than these. You can use your finger to smudge. You can also use like a tissue or an old cloth to smudge the value together. Another trick is to use, I can use an even darker pencil, like a 5H here. What's in the pencil is called graphite. If I use the graphite on a scrap piece of paper and lay down a lot of it, then I can put it on my finger and use that to kind of color things in with a smooth value. Then you won't get all those lines from your pencil. Now just make sure you clean off your finger before you go touching the rest of your drawing. So now that I'm starting to put in some value, all I'm doing is I'm looking at the objects and trying to find the dark areas and the light areas. You're used to that, we've done that before. I just wanna make sure that you're looking really closely. It's a challenge, it's not easy. But you can see, for instance, over here, there's, there's a fold of fabric. Folds of fabric are really tricky. Usually what you'll see is a dark area where the fabric goes under, then a lighter area where the fabric comes out, and then another dark area on the other side where the fabric goes back in. So the fold of fabric gets dark on one side, it goes from dark on one side to light in the middle gradually. So I'm kind of easing up on my pencil here. Gets really light. And then on the other side again, it gradually gets dark. Dark on one side, little lighter than really light. And then the reverse, a little darker, a little darker. You can use your finger to smudge to make it a little bit smoother. You can also use, and particularly, I, I would probably wait until the end of the drawing for this, but you can use an eraser to then go back and make that light part even lighter. And it doesn't look like much now, but once you add that into the other parts of the fabric, once you keep showing that pattern, you'll start to see the whole thing kind of take shape and look like that folded fabric. And look that closely, not just at folds of fabric, but at all the different places where you have value. Over here, I have the edge of the vase has some dark values. And then behind that, there's a shadow on the edge of the book. Carefully look at the shape of the shadow. 
it's kind of round to follow the shape of the vase and then there's a straight part at the bottom and carefully look at the values on the shadow is the whole thing the same value is it all the same darkness or are there parts that are medium and maybe parts that are a little bit darker i see it part of the shadow that's a little bit darker as it gets closer to the vase And then all the way at the back, it actually gets lighter. I think uh, over here, the light comes sort of around and behind the vase and it peeks in. So even just in that one area of shadow, there's medium, dark, and light shadow. And I'm gonna save the really, really dark spots till later. So I'm just showing myself where there's shadow right now, but I'm not making them very, very dark. At the end, I'm gonna go back and all these spots that are really dark in real life, I'm gonna add in those really dark values. The best way to show the shapes in your still life is not to outline everything. 
look at the shape of this candle here, instead of drawing lines around each part of it, I'm really showing where the candle is by showing the dark and light areas. So the glass jar behind the candle is darker than the candle. And so there's a dark area here. And the shadow underneath the candle on the table is also dark. And that way you can see the difference between the candle and the dark parts behind it. And that's how you know where the candle is. But I didn't draw a big black line here to show where the candle is because I don't see a big black line on the side of the candle in real life. So if you do see lines in real life, like the branches, I'm seeing lines on the edge of the branches. And you might see lines on things like, um, like these, uh, I don't know what those are called, leaves too. <laughs> the edges of the leaves might look like lines. But if you don't see a line, don't draw a line. Try to show the difference in value and let your viewer know where everything is that way. When you have everything in your drawing where you want it and you have also added in a lot of the values and you're starting to get close to finishing up, you definitely want to add in some really dark values. Right now, there are some dark-ish areas, but I've been using the B pencil the whole time and I've been not pressing down that hard. So I'm gonna choose a softer pencil, maybe the 3B pencil or 4B. Again, if you don't have these pencils with the numbers on them, that's okay, just use a regular pencil. But at the end, you're gonna really start pressing down hard and find in your objects the darkest parts and make sure they are as dark as you can possibly make them. So if there's a part of your, your objects that's black, you're gonna press down as hard as you can to make that area really dark on the paper. And then once you have those really, really dark parts in, you're gonna start to notice that you'll probably need to go back and like adjust other parts a little bit um, to make them make sense with those really dark parts. See how now it's like random that there's that really dark shadow right there. I need to make all of this a little darker because um, none of this is as light as things like the flame and the reflection on this shiny bag, all of this is a little darker.
as you're putting down those darker areas of shadow, you're gonna notice that your hand starts getting kind of messy um, and you can start to smudge your drawing by accident. So one trick is to put just a piece of scrap paper over the drawing and under your hand so that as you move your hand along, you're not smudging your drawing. Also, whether you do that or not, you'll probably get some smudges. So towards the end, make sure you're erasing any smudges that you have accidentally outside the, the objects. And while you're doing that, it's a good idea to see if there are any um, highlight areas, any light areas of the drawing that you could bring out more with the eraser because just like this part got a little smudged, parts of your drawing are probably smudged that you don't even realize. And let's say this part of the vase, that's a bright area and I think it got a little grayed out by accident. So I'll just use my eraser to lighten up that area. And then you can always smudge back in a little bit if you need to, to make the transition a little more natural. You can, especially if you have like the lip of a glass like this, the eraser is a really good tool to get just like a really small highlight. Like that. And then you might want to add, especially with a glass or something else that's really shiny, a line next to that. It can show that shininess, a really dark line or area next to a really light line or area makes things look shiny. So see how on the bag too, I have these really dark areas next to really bright areas and that makes it look like it's reflecting all that light. If you think you are done with your drawing, a couple things to do. One is to step away a little bit. I'm just moving my body back so I can see it from a little bit farther away. It can help you get a sense of the drawing as a whole because sometimes when we're kind of leaning over the drawing, we're really getting just the details. When I leaned back, the, the flame doesn't really look like it's standing out as a bright area. So I'm gonna make what's around it a little bit darker so that the flame shows up and looks brighter. And I'll also use my eraser like I just showed you to make sure that it actually is really light. And another thing you wanna do towards the end is make sure you show some kind of line in the background to show that the stuff is on a table or it's on something, it's not floating in the air. So you have already some shadows in and that will help with that. We can tell it's sitting on something because there's a shadow on something, but it also helps to add a line that's called a ground line in the background. And it really can just be a line. Obviously you could also show what's back here, but even if you just do a line, you can smudge it a little bit to make it a little bit, um, like, like there's a difference, like the top is a little darker, the bottom is a little lighter, but that just shows again that it's sitting on a table, there's maybe a wall here, it's somewhere. 